want to say thanks to the Holocaust Center for hosting my exhibit on the Jews of Amiens, a photo exhibit where I had uh, discovered 41 photo identification cards of Jews from Amiens in the Somme region, just north of Paris, about an hour. Jewsofthesum.com, www.jewsofthesum, S-O-M-M-E dot com. The people that we'll be talking about briefly here today were were not part of the photo fiche collection, which took place in 1942, because they were only in Amiens from 1938, roughly, to 1940. So by the time the photo ID cards were made in 1942, in June, they were elsewhere. After the Germans occupied Amiens and moved on to Paris in May of 1940, they didn't lose any time inventorying the Jews in the area. They made two lists. The two lists were drawn up with the help of the French civilian authorities. So um, on, the, on those two lists, if you combine them, there were 18 people who came from either Germany or Austria. Now, the, the, Germ- the Germans are, present an interesting case. One of them has a direct connection to Kristallnacht. This was a, a man by the name of Kurt Steinhardt. He has actually a close connection to Kristallnacht. He lived in Dresden, Germany, east, eastern part of Germany. His family owned a department store. He had a brother who was in partnership with in the department store. And he himself married uh, Sonia, who was a sales girl in the, in the department store. And they had, um, they had two children. There's a picture of him with one of his children, um, Marianne, in 1931 in Dresden. And then later on, there was another girl named Gert, who was born in 1937. Well, the, the connection uh, of the Steinhardt family with Kristallnacht is this. His brother, Werner, was actually the last groom married in one of the chief synagogues of Dresden. That was on November 5th, 1938. And three days later, the synagogue was destroyed during the Kristallnacht outbreak. And uh, Kurt himself was um, arrested in the pogrom that accompanied the destruction of the synagogue. And he was sent to the concentration camp of Buchenwald. Eventually, he was offered the option of, of emigrating and being liberated. So that's how he that's how we know he came to France. And he went to Paris, and uh, from there he got to Amiens. Back in, the wife and daughter, two daughters stayed back in Germany, but they in turn got arrested and deported, and, and they died in Auschwitz the year after he did. But no, he's, he died in June of 1942, and they went over in, in uh, 1943. Because we, we don't have any really firsthand information from most of the most of the refugees. What looks pretty clear is that some of them went to Paris. All right, they were in Paris before they were in Amiens, and Amiens is uh, 75 miles or so north of Paris. Um, so it wasn't far away. But you know, why did they come to Amiens? It's been something of a mystery. We really have one one significant item of information about that, which may or may not apply to, to, to all of the people. Um, this is a letter that I found in the synagogue archives in, in Amiens. Uh, it was a letter that was written by a fellow named Paul Kammerman. And Paul Kammerman was, was born in Budapest and was listed as an Austrian. And in 1963, Kammerman wrote to Mr. Lair the president of the Amiens synagogue in German to ask him for some help with some pension claims that he had against the Austrian government. And to, to refresh um, Mr. Lair's memory, he lists various events that occurred to him during the time between about 1938 and 1940. And in, the, in this letter that he wrote, he has this one phrase which has been very interesting. The prefect from Paris, the police officer in Paris, sent me to Amiens as uh, specifying Amiens as my compulsory residence at the end of 1938. 
since I was a former Austrian. Well, so this, this turns out to be quite interesting. This is not when the Germans had, had beaten the French, had defeated the French yet. This is before that. This is 1938. So it was the French who wanted, he's Clamp cameraman, he says, who wanted him to be located in Amiens. In general, people can't figure out why any of these people fetched up in Amiens. So uh, I can't tell you for sure that this is the, um, the definitive answer, this, this um, sentence from Paul Kammermann's chronology, but it looks like it. There, it might have been a question of um, people being assigned by the French government to live there. Um, I was able to track down the, the destinies of, of 11 of the people, uh, 11 of the adults. Uh, who were who were refugees? They all went to Auschwitz, and only one, this Paul Kammermann, uh, he's the only one that survived after being moved around from one camp to the next. Uh, there's a good picture of him at the on the uh, website of the Memorial of the Shoah in Fr in Paris. So you had all these refugees. They were there in 1938, registered in September and October of 1940, and then in December. December 2nd and 3rd of 1940, they were expelled from Amiens by order of the German authorities. And some of them went to work camps. They, and it seems that others were maybe sort of not taken into custody, but went to Paris and then tried to hide out. Uh, Paul Cameron's letter describes some of where he went. Uh, and, not, not only the refugees, but then later on, people who had left Amiens were also in different parts of Paris. So I think, you know, the way in which the, um, the city remembers its, and even the, the Jewish community remembers its uh, martyrs, um, is more based on who got taken away from there. When the, when the final memorial tablet got erected in 1948. It didn't include them. Uh, in fact, I don't think people necessarily knew what happened to them. But we know now because of the work that's been done since Serge Klarsfeld and others, what happened to what happened to the Jews of France. Uh, they were they, they just a lit in Amiens for two years. They were birds that light on the telephone wires. And then they were gone. And, you know, there was a possibility uh, the, the, they were remembered, you know, for a while, but in 1948, they kind of fell off the memorial tablet and, you know, all of the Jews fell off the, you know, memory, the erase board of the, uh, the city for a long time. And, you know, there's, there's been a rediscovery and some very, you know, a lot of the rediscovering has been done by non-Jews there. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of credit to go around to. There's a lot that's obscure about the refugees, and you know I don't have we don't have pictures of any except three of these refugees that I'm talking about: Steinart, um, Tilly Offenkraut, and uh, and uh, Paul Kammerman. I haven't seen pictures of any of the others, but in the in the archives, including the registry where they had to appear before the police and sign their names, there's their signatures and you at least have a, a trace of the humanness um, of them. You know, I know that people say they like stories, you know, and stories are the way to teach. But, but sometimes you just have traces.